make sure to subscribe to my new YouTube channel, Call Me Howard, for gaming, app reviews, and more. Hey everyone, Howard Pinsky here from IceFlowStudios.com. For those looking to create custom vector designs in Photoshop, the Custom Shape tool, which can be found with your other shape tools, is a great place to start. Up on your options bar, you can choose from the many shapes that Adobe has provided for you to use. If this is your first time exploring custom shapes in Photoshop, you may only see a few of them in the shape picker. But if you click on the gear icon at the top right corner, you can choose to add a variety of packs that comes with Photoshop. Let's load them all in just to see what's available. When this pop-up comes up, choosing Append will add new shapes to the bottom of your current list, or pressing OK will replace the current shapes. And here are all the shapes that you have access to in Photoshop. Now for many users this may be more than enough, but for those who tend to create their own shapes for their websites or designs, let me show you how you can create your own custom shapes in Photoshop and access them whenever you need it. For this example, we're going to be creating a simple speech bubble with two tails, perfect for comics when two people are talking. Starting out simple, switch over to your lips tool and drag out an oval anywhere in your document. Now that the oval's in place, let's switch to our pen tool to create the first tail. When the pen tool is selected, make sure that the shape option is chosen on your options bar, and then over to the right, choose the combine shapes option to ensure that the final result is one shape instead of three. Place your first point somewhere inside the oval, and then when you click to make the second point, drag your mouse to the left to create a curved path. Now if you were to simply click back inside the oval, you're going to be left with a pretty skewed shape. To work around this, hold down your Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows and drag the curve point back towards the anchor point. This will help limit the big loop curve that we saw a moment ago. Now we can go ahead and click and drag back inside the oval to create the last curve. Good, with that tail complete, a simple duplication should do the trick for the second one. On your tools bar, grab the path selection tool and click on the tail that we just created. The path selection tool allows us to select the different paths that make up the overall shape. You should see the path and the anchor points around the tail. With it selected, just like you would duplicate a standard layer, hold down your Alt or Option key and drag it to the right. You can also flip it as well. Under the Edit menu, you're going to see a Transform Path submenu. Let's go ahead and flip it horizontally, and place it on the right towards the top. Perfect. At any point you want to hide or show your paths, Command or Control, Shift and H will do exactly that. So now that we have our new custom shape completed, how do we save it for future use? Back under the Edit menu, you may have noticed the Define Custom Shape option. However, it may be grayed out at times. In order for this option to become available, you must have a shape layer active, which we do, but you also need to have the paths visible. A moment ago, we used the Command or Control Shift H shortcut to hide the path. Using that same shortcut will reveal our path once again, and it will also allow us to select the Define Custom Shape option. When the pop-up comes up, give your shape a name, and press OK. Now, at any point in the future, you can choose your custom shape tool, and your newly created shape will be available for you to use. And because shape layers are vector, you can drag the shape out as big or as small as you need it. And that is how you can create your own custom shapes in Photoshop. If you're looking for more Photoshop tutorials, make sure to check out my website, iceflowstudios.com. Take care.